So, uh, good morning, students, uh, honorable guests, and our honorable judges. Welcome to our seventh project contest of this year. 那欢迎大家来到我们第七届的专题大赛。那呃，今天非常开心，就是各位同学看起来都已经非常蓄势待发。那我接下来要花一点点时间介绍我们今天非常重要的贵宾以及评审们。首先 ，so I would like to introduce our honorable judges today. So first of all, please welcome our first judge, the uh, uh Durham ISC, the director of the science department, Graham Yogenson. Yes, thank you. Say hi to everyone first. Okay, hello everyone. <laughs> nice to see you. So I will uh, invite you for remarks later after I introduce everyone. Yes. But he is our Duran ISC Science Director. Okay, our Graham Yogenson. Next, I would like to welcome the Chef ISC Academy Steel Director, Stephen. Did I made that? I'm sorry. Did I made that? So. Good morning, everyone. I'm really looking forward to watching your presentations today. <laughs> Thank you. 那接下来我想要欢迎杜伦大学跟呃雪佛大学在亚洲区招生的主任 Sherry Liu. So we will welcome our director of the North Asia, Sherry Liu. And also, I would like to welcome our director of ISC Center, Angel Yang, and our ISC Global Research Center's director, Angel. Please, 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 那接下来，呃，在我邀请现场的贵宾为我们致辞之前，我们有来自呃远方，也就是杜伦大学非常温暖的问候，也就是杜伦大学的老师特别为在今天的参赛者同学们录了一段影片。So we have a very precious video come from, uh, the uh, warm regards from the Durham University, Elona Garwick, that she's sending her best regards to everyone. Hello everybody, my name is Eleanor Garrick and I am the Regional Manager for East Asia here at Durham University. I just wanted to say a quick hello and congratulations to the final contestants of the seven project competition. I just wanted to wish you all the very best of luck in the competition and I very much hope that we will see some of you in Durham very, very soon. Thank you very much and best of luck to you all. 谢谢他，但是他真的非常有心，特别录了这段影片给大家。那接下来我想要邀请，就是这一次特别远道从英国来的，呃，就是 Durham I C Director of Science Department， 呃 ，Grant Jorgensen to give us a warm regards to every student. And good morning, everyone. And um, so I just want to start off by saying congratulations on becoming this far in the competition. You've clearly done a lot of hard work, and it's been rewarded. And I look forward to seeing your fantastic presentations today. I'm sure you've all worked really hard together, and it's going to be amazing to see what you produce. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure my colleagues are as well. So well done. Relax. You've come this far, so let's see the best of what you've got to produce. So now, thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, Grant. 好，那非常快速的介绍过所有今天呃我们非常难得来从英国来的这些评审之后，废话不多说，我们接下来要开始准备我们竞赛了。So after the all the introduction, I believe all of you have well prepared, right? Yes. Yes. Good. So the first team I would like to invite is the team 34 from Zaixin High School that they are going to present Paradise or Mediterranean. Thank 
Hello everyone, welcome to Mediterranean Paradise. Okay, um, hello everyone, welcome to Mediterranean Paradise. My name is Anne. My name is Jasper. My name is Stanley. <laughs> Okay, first of all, executive summary. Our company Dynamico is launching the Citrus Flash campaign to redefine Cyprus's image, leveraging its stunning beaches and rich cultural heritage through captivating visual content, engaging social media promotions, and strategic partnerships. The campaign aims to promote Cyprus as a destination for both tourism and investment. By driving economic growth and shaping the future of nation branding, Dynamic Co. seeks to refresh the beach experience and redefine Cyprus's destinies. Next. Next, I'm going to introduce our market overview. Here are some rankings about Cyprus. The first page shows that Cyprus ranks 28th out of 132 economies for Global Innovation Index, 20, 24 out of 48 high income economies for high, uh, and 118 out in the world for export. And also, Cyprus ranks 108 in the world for GDP and 124 for the PVP. On the second page, it shows that Cyprus ranks 158 in the population, 53rd in tourism, 140 for immigration, and 38 out, 467 for politics. Cyprus has several promising markets, but tourism, real estate, and technology sectors have shown significant potential in recent years. With its beautiful beaches and rich cultural heritage, tourism continues to be a key industry. Real estate is attractive due to the growing demand for properties both from locals and international investors. Apart from tourism, Cyprus has significant focus for service sectors, particularly in areas such as finance, shopping, and professional services. The finance sector includes banking, insurance, and investment services, making one of the key contributors to Cyprus economy. The shipping industry is also robust, with Cyprus as one of the largest merchant fleets in the world. Moreover, professional services like legal accounting and consulting are essential contributors to the country's economy. These sectors, along with others like education and research, play a vital role in Cyprus' economy last year. Okay, moving on to company overview and strategy. Okay, so our company name is Dynamic Co. It is founded on September 1st, 2023 by the three of us. And our co core focus is nation branding for small countries to stimulate economic growth while adhering to ESG principles. And you can see our logo on the right hand side. Yeah. Okay, so our expertise is crafting comprehensive branding strategies for small nations. And our innovative marketing approach includes SWOT analysis with creative ideas and combining fun and cultural authenticity in campaigns. Last but not least, we emphasize on social media, particularly short eye-catching videos. So our milestones and achievements, we are recognized for groundbreaking work in nation branding and facilitated economic growth and global visibility for client countries. Um, our future outlook um, includes driving positive change through effective marketing strategies, and we focus on innovation, inclusivity, and environmental stewardship. Our vision is to shape the future of nation branding on a global scale. Next, I'm going to introduce our brand analysis. First of all, it's our brand position. 
Cyprus is positioned at a Mediterranean destination, offering a blend of rich history, stunning natural beauty, and modern amenities. It caters to various segments of tourists, including sun seekers, history enthusiasts, and adventure travelers. Its strategic location at the crossroad of Europe, Asia, and Africa positions it as a bridge between cultures, making it an attractive destination for international visitors and investors alike. Next is our brand identity, natural beauty. The island offers diverse landscapes, including golden beaches, rough coastlines, and mountainous terrain. Iconic landmarks like the Traduce Mountain and the Alcamas Peninsula attract nature lovers and outdoor adventurers. Last is our brand messaging, Escape to Paradise. Emphasizing the island's pristine beaches, azure water, and tranquil landscapes to attract sun seekers and relaxation seekers. Second is our invest in success, targeting investors with message, messages about Cyprus's favorable business environment, strategic location, and investment opportunities in sectors like tourism, real estate, and technology. Last is our taste of Mediterranean, showcasing Cyprus's culinary offerings promoting its delicious cuisine as a key aspect of the visitor's experience. Okay, moving on to the highlight, which is the campaign. So our campaign theme is Citrus Citrus Splash Refresh Your Beach Experience. Our target audience is people who enjoy musical festivals or love beaches with a focus on individuals interested, interested in citrus products. Our objective is to increase brand awareness for Cypress's citrus products and its image as a beach destination and stimulate tourism and boost the local economy. Our budget is about 5,000 euros. So the duration will last two weeks in January, coinciding with the musical festival and at Nisi Beach. The key message is to discover the beauty of Cyprus through its refreshing citrus products and stunning beaches. Our company strategy includes these seven, um, yeah, and then our adherence to ESG is to ensure all campaign activities align with environmental, social, and government principles. We also use sustainable materials for merchandise and e event setup. Last, we promote responsible consumption and waste reduction during the campaign. Next, I'm going to talk about our campaign timeline. From day one to three is our pre-campaign preparation. Finalized campaign materials such as visual content, social media posts, and promotions, and coordinate with partners for collaboration. From day four to four to five, launch pre-campaign teasers, sharing teasers posts on social media platforms to generate excitement, and send out press releases to media outlets. From six, day six to ten is our campaign activation. We're going to launch full-scale campaign across social media channels and start promotions and contests and activate partnerships with local business and begin sharing educational content about citrus fruit. Next, from day 11 to 12 is our mid-campaign engagement host beach site events or pop-up stamps, and continue promoting contests and special deals, and encourage user-generated content with dedicated hashtags. From day 13 to 14 is our final push. We're going to in intensify social media efforts with countdown posts and offer last-minute promotion to drive engagement. Last but not least, we're going to prepare for a campaign evaluation and feedback collection. Our post campaign, campaign after week two, evaluation campaign performance based on predefined metrics and analyze feedback from participants and partners and compile results into a comprehensive report for stakeholders. And last, plan to future campaigns or adjustments based on inside game. 
This is our concept generated by AI art. Next, I'm going to introduce our evaluation. There are seven ways to measure our evaluation. First, social media engagement. Measure likes, comments, shares, and mentions on campaign posts across platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Next is the website traffic. Track the number of visitors to a campaign website or landing page and analyze traffic sources and user behavior. Third is the sales of citrus products. Monitor sales data to assess the campaign's impact or purchasing behavior. Fourth is the, is the visitor attendance at events. Record attendance at big site events and collect feedback from participants. And next is the participant feedbacks. Gather insights from surveys or interviews to understand perception and satisfaction levels. Next is the partnership efficiency. Evaluate the success of cross-promotional activities and exclusive deals with local businesses. Lash. Hashtag performance. Monitor the use and engagement of the campaign hashtag on social media. And this is the end of our presentation. So, stay where you are. And any questions from our judges? Yes, Jerry. Um, has anyone of you been to uh, Cyprus? No. So, why you pick this country? Because, um, first of all, my club. Buddies Without Borders, we have like clubs over 20 plus countries and Cyprus is one of them. And I I am friend with um, the Cyprus club president. So um, we talk about a lot of like citrus stuff and it kind of just inspired me into like deeping it into the, um, this campaign. And in terms of your name, the Dynamic Game Core, yeah. what made you choose? Uh, so, 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 yeah, what um, maybe analysis you may have done or feedback you gained on the name of your company? Um, basically, we just um, like searched for innovative adjectives and we want to like make it to the fullest, so we picked Dynamic. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. So I really liked your AI art slide, but it was very sh it was only on the screen for a very short time. Could you go back to that one, please? So I think that's a really creative way to explain to us your concept. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit more about why you chose to break this AI, AI art? So first of all, all of us are not really good at art. So we were thinking about a way to like fully express our thoughts. And like recently AI has been really trend trendy and we, we thought of just using um, like entering some keywords and then it just popped out, which is re a really good outcome. Yeah, just out of interest, which keywords did you put in? Because is that citrus in the foreground there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like citrus, beach, um, people, um, citrus, yes. Yeah, great. I think that's really creative. Well done. Thank you. Um, thank you for your presentation. I think uh, you, uh, you, three of you, prepared very well in uh, in the research about the, uh, your project. Uh, but I would like to give you some feedback about your presentation, because uh, for the uh, several slides of your presentation, uh, I think you can uh, add more graphic to explain uh, to help uh, to help give us the explanation. And um, I forgot one question about uh, your first week. Uh, can you name of the some partners you like to collaborate with? Well, we like we like to collaborate with local like business like uh, food is business or kind of drink or alcohol or casino. Thank you.
So thank you very much. It's a very wonderful presentation. Thank you very much. So I Thank you. So before we introduce uh, the next team to come up, because we are recording the whole competition and play it online, to make sure that everyone have a really good light and you're in the center of the camera, I have a few tips to remind you. 等一下呢,那个接下来的对于麻烦你们在做presentation的时候,站在这一次,就是第一件事情哦。第二件事情是麻烦尽量站的位置在这个中间度,就是我们评审中间桌这个范围里面。那除非你不是介绍,你可以在
the same basin is one of the small islands developing countries, which is called as IDF. The country lacks economies of scale, economic diversification, funds for industrial development, popularity, and firm academic and educational system. These by factor leads to a lack of competitiveness. First still, after the strike of COVID-19, this country was tremendously impacted on tourism, which is the most significant industry of this country. While well, um, here's the opportunities. Combining the strengths and weaknesses, we've come up with some opportunities that can create the value of St. Vincent and boost its nation brand. The blue part stands for the strength, and red part stands for weaknesses. The yellow part symbolizes the opportunities we came up with. The natural landscape and Vincentian culture constitute the base of the regeneration of tourism, while the lower living cost and less restriction can appeal to tourists and travel agencies, respectively. Consequently, the regeneration of tourism can save St. Vincent from being out of popularity and let the COVID-stricken economy soar. Let me introduce the second thought of the opportunity, which is the initiative of environmental research using the same strand above, including the natural landscapes such as tropical and marine environments, and that restriction on industry. Combining the advantage of lower rent compared to other nations, St. Vincent can provide a perfect value for environmental research, and by this, the problem of lacking competitiveness will be addressed. And this is the last thought, which is building the access to foreign investments. Using the same strand above, same business can build a perfect access to foreign investments. And by this, the problems of lacking competitiveness and funds will be addressed as well. While having opportunities mentioned above, St. Vincent is also facing some external threats. The homogeneity in culture and landscape among Caribbean regions serves as one of the most severe threats. And the proliferation of island tourism in other countries is also threatening St. Vincent's tourism development. However, in order to in order to, to meet St. Mary's team is an outstanding. We've been working on a complete travel website, a travel program and system to make our visitors travel with ease. Also, discovering more value in St. Vincent is our long-term goal. Finding St. Vincent's value and potential is the basic step of nation branding. And promoting tourism is undoubtedly one of the most effective ways to introduce St. Vincent to the world. Without a chance to thrive in such intense international tourism market, St. Vincent's value will not be properly delivered, and not to mention attracting target audience. That's the reason why we came up with our campaign in order to meet our goal, promoting tourism, consolidating the value of St. Vincent, and boost a station brand. And here's our central framework. What St. Vincent has to offer isn't just a tourist resort. By providing sea activities, eco-adventure, traditional delicacies, natural resources, and relatively cheap human resources, St. Vincent can be a supplier of happiness, a fresh place for tropical research, and a potential market for investment. And of course, these all come with a sustainability concern. And let me introduce our campaign, The Call of the Bay, which is a series of travel programs. There are three programs in this campaign, including the general program, adaptive research program, and the investment program. Let's take a look at the first one, the general program designed for a couple and families. St. Vincent can provide a fabulous exploration in the country, including festivals, kids that market, local cuisine such as jackfish in New Canada, sea activities such as kayaking and shore towing. By this program, we hope to raise the popularity of St. Vincent and to shape its nation brand. Two, just for you. Every new brand new. And the next one is the academic program proposed for the researchers. As mentioned above, St. Vincent can provide rich tropical and marine resources for the investigation. And a lower cost is one of the incentives of this program. And without a doubt, a balance between environment and development is our main concern. So there's no worry of destroying the environment. In tropical breeze, knowledge flows with ease. 
And that's taking a look at the last one, the investment program designed for investors and enterprises worldwide. There are two itineraries in this program, and the first one is the fundamental manufacturing, which contains the business of construction sites. The other is the cultivating industry, which contains the farm that business. Each of them is along with all of the seminars, and we hope to stimulate the domestic economy of savings and any gratitudes. On the second shore, let your assets soar. These three programs make up the call of a place, and we hope to strengthen the value and to shape the nation brand of St. Vincent and the Grenadine by this, by this campaign. Let's board a plane bound from the tropical paradise to North Europe, the Frozen Kingdom. Our target audience of the campaign would be Nordic people. St. Vincent spoke its warm sunshine and tropical vibe, while in North Europe, the temperature ranges from minus 5 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius, which means sunshine is luxurious in certain seasons. We pick Nordic people as our target audience because of the distinctions between these two countries. And we firmly believe that these two countries can create unexpected spies. And here's the market analysis for the general program. There are approximately 5.5 million households in Finland, 5.3 million households in Norway, 10.3 million in Sweden, and 2.7 million in Denmark. And the GDP per capita is 6.1 thousand US dollar on average. With these tremendous numbers of household and GDP, Nordic people are our ideal target audience. Moreover, the weather in North Europe is freezing and gradually unfolded night. It works with the problem of the seasonal affective disorder, the SAD lots of Nordic people suffer from. We hope to solve these problems by the call of the place. Chilly winter degrades the energy of Nordic people, shortening their length of outdoor activities. And this vicious circle aggravates the seasonal depression in North Europe. We, we help to solve this problem through the call of the place. And here's the market analysis for the academic program. We found some pieces about tropical research by European scholars on the internet. And here's some examples. Some scholars have conducted some research from the on the influences from the Caribbean region on the North Europe. And same as the other Grenadines can provide a perfect value for this kind of research. And let's take a look at the market analysis for the investment program. These graphs demonstrate the investment towards savings in other Grenadines from the world out of annual GDP. This graph demonstrates the status quo in 1981. The world investment in savings in other Grenadines was low on average. And in 2001, you can see the color of some places that got darker. In North Europe, Sweden has increased its investment amount considerably. And in 2021, many nations have increased their support for St. Vincent. And in North Europe, not only Sweden has increased its investment amount, but also Norway and Finland. And we can definitely say that St. Vincent has drawn the attention from all over the world. That's the reason why we initiated our investment program to boost our nation's brand. North Europe is just our first step of market analysis, market targeting. In our wildest dream, we hope to expand our market to all over the world by designing different programs for different target audiences. And let me introduce our Corby analysis. The first one is the products. We have the call of the place, including the general program, the adapt research program, and the investment program. The price of the card of the place is estimated at 13,000 to 16,000 Norwegian crown, 12,000 to 16,000 Swedish krona, 1,000 to 1,400 euro, and 8,000 to 10,000 Spanish crown. It has to be reminded that only round trip tickets and stage fee are fully covered. Additional expenses such as freezing tickets are not included. Our estimation is based on the marketability. Moving on to place, there are several places where customers can book the itineraries. Firstly, we have an annual travel expedition, and here's a sample of it. 
Bates position is going to be 100% online, offering special discount for the attendees. And we will also collaborate with more Europe enterprises, such as Innovator, a Swedish luggage retailer. By this collaboration, Innovator will be able to place at and set up booth in our exposition. And we hope to raise the popularity of our exposition and to increase the convenience for the customers. All in all, this collaboration will be mutually beneficial. And we've also designed a website for our campaign called Find Your Same Vincent. And here's a sample of it. Browsers can learn a lot of information about Same Vincent, such as cuisine, accommodation, transportation, entertainment, and flight and visit. The most important thing is that you can directly book your programs of the part of the place on this website with exclusive discounts online. If you could click that red button, you'll be back to the booking page of the part of the place. Then you can book your flight at home. This page shows the available flights based on the information you just filled in. Then you can put your accommodation and your activities on and offshore. We also provide detailed information about every activities. You can put your programs of the part of a place in each of agencies in North Europe as well. Moving on to promotion, we will collaborate with key opinion leaders online and we will host travel exposition as mentioned, and the commercial and tax play a crucial role in our promotion section. Here comes the ad placing. Our target audience would be the Nordic people who often browse travel websites or blogs, those who often search for the words of winter blues, scholars interested in tropical zones and potential investors. Merging algorithm will be able to identify our target audience and to precisely place our ads. This flyer, the one you just received, is one of the ads that we'll place. And next is the revenue use. The revenue of our campaign will be committed to domestic education, tour system, and infrastructure. Partial revenue will be devoted back to our travel exposition. Through this utilization, we hope not only to stimulate the economy of St. Vincent, but also strengthen its brand value. The nation branding of St. Vincent is more than promoting its original assets. We desire to make St. Vincent's in a value glamorous. Then we introduce our timeline. First of all, we design our products and then conduct research on the markets. After this two action, we'll optimize our products for the first time. Then we'll approach our virtual exposition, design our app, and do the information about the potential event expenditure. Then we'll contact our business collaborators, such as KLL, travel agencies, and shops. And then we'll arrange our human resources and do the purchasing. Then we'll advertise and announce the news and put up virtual expedition and website. And then we'll do the reception analysis using the reception mechanism. And then we'll optimize our product for the second time based on the reception analysis. Last, we will utilize our revenue. To wrap up, with our devotion, the facilities of St. Vincent will be improved, continue boosting this country's tourism, which propagates St. Vincent's unique culture and makes the revenue accelerate other industries. Moreover, our advancing in educational system will enhance its competitiveness and contribute to the country's continuous innovation and nation branding. And that's all of our presentation. We genuinely believe that with devotion, St. Vincent and the Grenadine will thrive in days to come. Oh my gosh. Thank you, and we're now open to any questions. Questions from our honorable judges? Thank you, very much. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, I've just got one question. Have you ever checked the flight up from Taiwan to St. Vincent? Yes, we have, but our target audience would be the Nordic people, so, people, so um, the flight from Taiwan to the, the Caribbean region, the same as the Anagrana, 
means it's not our first choice to put on the PowerPoint. I uh, will expand our market in the future by, um, by designing different programs for Taiwanese. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, thank you very much for your presentation today. I know it looks like there's a lot of work and a lot of analysis and thought got into your presentation. So, I just have one question. Do you think there are any, there are any negative impacts for more people visiting segments of revenues? Yeah, we believe that it will affect Siemens' environment, but we managed to set restriction on the tourist amount and behavior. And we'll also limit the investment use, and we'll keep track on the impact on the environment. Also, we would like to estimate to, to put a bank on the happy industry and to maintain the environment. Okay, thank you very much. Awesome. So, I so thank you for what well, was a fantastic presentation, and there's a lot of uh, key facts in there that are brilliant. My only question, and I, I apologise if you don't know the answer, is there an international airport in St Vincent's or the Grenadines? Is it has it got a, um, a a large airport to take that to it? There are definitely international airport in St Vincent's, but not many. But it, it's enough for our program. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very good uh, presentation. Uh, we, I think we all enjoyed it a lot. So my question is, you, how you came up with this idea, and how you, uh, when you see this topic, what is the first idea you came, and how you discussed it, and came up with all those ideas and presentations. It is because of a little bit serendipity. We randomly pick a country on the Google map, and the more we learn about Siemens and any branding, the more passion we grow grow for it. And we we were eating a kind of bread that contains a, an ice butter inside, and we think of the concept of the call of the lights because the worm and the ice. And that's why we um, think of this project name, and we genuinely believe that this concept could be to an incredible resort. There's very little. Thank you. I think you two will be very successful in business here. Really. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's very modern. So, uh, before we move to next thing, I want to make a correction of the typo. Earlier, it should be team 16 instead of 12. It should be 16. But the subjects and the team member are all accurate. I just want to make that, make that clear. So it's team 16. So now our next team will be team 48. How we down in high school. Your top is going to be the tourism gym in Asia Pacific. Please welcome them. Hello everyone, I'm Team 48. Today, my topic is the tourism gem in Asia Pacific. Imagine you are looking at a map and you just found Australia. It is at the bottom of the map, the age of the world. And you may think that Australia is in a remote corner of the planet. You may look at the Earth, staring at the rotating sphere, an idea bumped into your mind. No country is in a corner because we can never define where the center is. 
However, when it comes to tourism, I do believe Australia is the center of the world. First of all, let's take a look at the market. In this section, I will concentrate on the target market, goals, and competitors of Australian tourism. The target market is defined as potential tourists and will be divided into two segments. These are the countries in the first part. According to the United Nations, they are the top countries that visited Australia in the prior year. The data also shows that these countries are considerable to Australian tourism. These are the countries in the second part. Targeting specifically in these countries shows the ambition of broadening the target market in tourism because these are the countries that have the most expenditure in traveling. So, what about the goal? There are 8 million people on Earth. 975 million of them are eager to have a trip around the world. And now we're not going to tell that much. We just want to attract 1.2% of them. The goal is believed to help Australia recover from the pandemic. They will attract over 15 million visitors in the year 2030, which is a 200% growth to 2022. As for the income, it is believed to have over 15 billion, 55 billion US dollars in tourism, which is a 270% growth in eight years. It is not surprising that Australia has such a potential in tourism. From 2008 to the pandemic, both arrivals and spendings increased dramatically in Australia, and that motivates us to dream big. The next part is about the competitors. As you can see, these countries have the highest higher ranking than Australia. They could be mentors, while they could also be threats to the Australian tourism. They could encourage tourists to visit through the Asia Pacific area, which includes Australia. Next, let's take a look at the company. In this part, we will look at the vision, history, and strategy of Australian tourism. Our company, Tourism Australia, has a core principle of making Australia the most desirable and memorable destination on Earth. This not only underpins everything in Tourism Australia, but also makes us become better and better. Its predecessor, Australian Tourist Commission was established in 1967 with the wish of maintaining a strength in global tourism and to provide a sustainable tourism environment. It was then established in 2004 and carried forward the former value. In 2011, with the release of 2020 Tourism Industry Growth Potential, a complete plan was set up. Finally, in 2020, it reached the goal of doubling overnight expenditures of more than 115 billion US dollars. This is not just a huge achievement. This also demonstrates our company's expertise in advertising and the ability to introduce Australia to the world. Next, we will talk about the strategy. It consists of product, price, place, and promotion. The first one is the product. It includes customer-oriented trips and Australia concept. Taking hot air balloons in Brisbane, visiting Blue Mountains in Katoomba, or even attending a concert in Sydney Opera House. The customer-oriented trips can definitely create a wonderful and unique holiday for you. And we do believe with the fascinating Australia concept, it is a trip that fits your hobbies and makes you remember the beauty of Australia. Then the next one is the price. Here, I will offer coupons to visitors when they visit in local shops. By doing so, we can have more discounts and let them to shop in these places. Or we can also give friendly visa policies. With this policy, more tourists may be welcomed to tourism to Australia, 
by giving them some tax reduction. The next part is the place. Whether it is a virtual channel or an online channel, it can help Australia to reach more people. By having these places, we can tell the world that Australia is the best place for tourism. The last part is about the promotion. Each of the advertisements and endorsements have their own way to promote Australia in the world. Painted aircrafts could be a spotlight in the airport. Social media could spread the information around the world without time limits. Image advertising can also be one way to strengthen the impression. And also, we can work with KOL, athletes, and movie stars. By doing so, we can introduce Australia to the world. The next part is about the campaign. Here, we will seek the aim and the action. Our goal is to promote Australia into one of the strongest countries in tourism in the world and to provide a sustainable pattern to introduce Australia or even in invite more tourists. It could be a step-by-step -step instruction, but it could be also become a cycle and in being influenced by each other. So, what are they? The first step is called the light. The core principle is to get more attention to Australia. The second is Beacon. Making potential tourists start on your journey is the goal of Beacon. The third one is PATH. Providing a nice traveling experience is the goal of PATH. And the last one, Voto. What we want to create is a second visit or recommendations to friends and families. Four steps, light, beacon, path, and photo. And believe me, they are not just icons. They are the future of Australian tourism. The first one is called the light. We want to create Australia's region impression in three ways. The first one is to create impressions through brands overseas, uh, through domestic industries. As you can see, Germany and USA both create their impression. So what can Australia do? Australia also has their domestic industries, like UG Australia, Kimba, and Woolworth. Woolworth dominates the grocery market in Australia, and it symbolizes the regular life of Australians. UGG Australia is another shoeskin footwear manufacturer with 100% Australian-made boots. Kimba is another free-to-use online graphic design tools. These companies not only demonstrate that Australia has the ability to establish global companies, but also gives us a chance to introduce Australia by these domestic industries. And we can also set up some tourism factory by collaborating with UGG Australia and introduce your people how did they make those boots. And the second one is by collaborating with brands overseas. As you can see, this is the most popular countries for film sets. And actually, Australia is already doing a great job. It's not an easy thing to be in a world top 10. However, there is still a gap between Australia and the other countries. So what can we do? Tax reduction. Let's take France, which is about five times more than Australia, for example. It has higher tax rebate and a more flexible rule. What Australia can do is to hire the tax rebate and to set up a more friendly rule. By doing so, we can attract more brands overseas and collaborating with them and create a strong impression on foreigners. And by collaborating between governments, companies overseas and the locals, we can definitely create impressions. The third one is to collaborate with celebrities. This is a graph about the collaboration between Roger Federer and Switzerland. Many people may wonder, 
doesn't work, let's take a look. These are some of the videos that have the highest views, and they are all the videos that collaborate between the government and the stars. And since Switzerland can do it, I believe that Australia can also do it. The second step is called Beacon. We want the potential tourists to start on your journey. These are some of the existing activities that hold up in Australia. But before holding up more uh, activities or tourists or even some concerts, we can attract more visitors to come to Australia. And they are not just on rare examples. Australia is already being better and better. And as you can see, massive arrivals and impressive benefits. By doing so, Australia is ready to achieve a better document in tourism. And the next one is to hold up their own events. Cairns and Munich are two of the experts in this area. And Australia can also do it. The next one is to offer transportation passes. Some people, they don't start their journey just because they think their lack of preparation. However, one transportation passes can solve all of the problems. It can solve your problems in transportation and also a well-organized trip and a variety of tickets is provided. And the next one is to collaborate with worldwide traveling scheme. Australia boosts of having a long coastline and some natural harbors like Port Jackson. It is one of the largest and best ports in the world. However, none of the ports in Australia is in the world top 100 most busiest ports. Why? I think that's because they don't have collaboration between the traveling schemes. With some collaboration between the schemes, the visitors can come to Australia and enjoy the beauty of the coast. And also, this is another example. Australia haven't joined Michelin Guide yet. By joining this guide, Australia best hotels and restaurants will be discovered in the stage of the internationals. And the next step is called the path. What we want to create is a nice traveling experience. We can give the tourists some specific topics of maps. And since the maps is free, easy to read, and have different language versions, the visitors can easily find some significant information. And also, some coupons mentioned above can be placed in the maps or digitalized into QR codes or text. The last step is photo. It is memory to the tourists. What we want to create is a second visit or recommendations to friends and families. We can create a seasonal trip scheme so visitors will go bored in Australia. Such as we can hold up the largest flower festival in the southern Nashville Fair, and we can also invite them to visit the Great Barrier Reef. And in the fall, they can visit the road Hops Food and Wine events, or even in the winter, they can enjoy the symbol of culture. Also, another way is to aim for the key demands. We can provide expertise packaging service for souvenirs or ziplock bags for countries in the humid places because it's harder to preserve food. So overall, what I wanted to say is that it is not easy to reach the goal and it is not an easy thing to promote their tourism in a short period of time. By guiding tourists of lights and setting a road in Beacon, offering a well-organized path and taking photos full of memories. It is never an easy thing to broaden its market, but I do believe in 2030, Australia can reach its goal of more than 15 million visitors. And that's all. Thank you. Any questions for our budget?
Thank you for this really fantastic presentation. Uh, I've been wondering that uh, this all sounds like really good and really well planned. But what's your um, target uh, cooperators? You mean uh... your target cooperators? Because to reach your goal, uh, you need a lot of cooperators. Yeah. And what's your main target cooperator to reach this goal? Uh, I think it is important to work with the locals because like if we want to develop the impressions then we have to work with some artists and they can create some icons for Australia and also the markets mentioned above if they sell some products that can tell everyone that it is just Australia and that, that, that would be nice because working with the locals is one of the most easiest way for Australia. It's not like brand overseas and they have to maybe work um, more difficult. So I think the locals will be the best companion. Okay, so firstly, yeah, very, very confident delivery. Well done, especially on your own. So it's very great to, to present on your own. Um, so my question is about, yeah, Australia is quite a popular tourist destination already. What, how would you summarize your unique selling points? How would, how would your business be different to other businesses? Uh, you mean comparing to other countries? Uh, comparing to other other businesses trying to attract tourists to Australia. Um, can you have a deeper explanation? Sorry. So, can you? So, your business is about attracting people to go to Australia. Is that correct? Yes. What makes your business different to other businesses doing the same thing? Um. It is a hard question, but what I would like to say is that um, the different, the major difference is about the the whole structure, because maybe uh, other plans is like they just want to attract visitors and come to their country to purchase things in Australia, but this one values the plan of creating a pattern to create a sustainable sustainable environment for tourism and what i want to create is this one won't work um I, I should say this one just it doesn't work maybe like in five years ten years it's a plan that works in maybe 20 years 50 years and 100 years and maybe i mean 100 years later and you go to australia and you see what a country has become and you find it that it is just a plan so yeah. that's what i want to create because i don't want tourism to become something bad for australia i want the environment to be sustainable and it continually to attract more people to australia because it is just so beautiful okay thank you very much so thank you once again for a fantastic presentation. I learned a lot. I wasn't aware of the brands that you mentioned that they were linked to um, to Australia, so that was really good. The one question I have is you mentioned within your marketing campaign the idea of use of athletes and movie stars. You also think KOL. Uh, what does KOL mean? Um, it's like influencers, like YouTubers or stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. No, that makes sense. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Why you pick Australia? I always ask this kind of, uh, question, like how you pick the countries, because it's interesting uh, how students, when they decide their topic, and when they decide which country they want to talk about, so I'm curious about it. Uh, when I was trying to find a country, and it is actually just like the first part, like I took a map, and I want to find some country in a remote corner because it may symbolize that that they don't develop the tourism that good. And I just found one country and it's called Australia. And I was shocked because like I have been to Australia for a short period of time and I think the scenaries are beautiful and people are nice, but 
when I look at the data, I'm, I'm just shocked that Australia doesn't have a good result in tourism. Like Thailand, Malaysia, Japan, these countries have a better result. And why not Australia? So in this, in, I mean, in this occasion, I decided to use Australia as one of the example because I want to help them and express how I think about Australia. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a wonderful presentation. And now we have three teams more later, so we're going to take a short break. Uh, I'm afraid I have to keep the break in three minutes. So please come back here 10 after 10. Thank you. So we have three teams more later. So we'll come back. I hope everybody gets fresh in this very short three minutes break. So now I'm going to invite our next team, the team 32. Now from Zhaxing High School, they're going to talk about the Ghana Slow, where golden coconut stores flow. Welcome, Zhaxing. Hi, this is Team Lady Chi from Kaiting High School presented at Ghana School for a Golden Cocoa Story Book Project. I'm Ashley, and they're my teammates, Stella and Tina. Before we start, I'd like to ask, do you know one out of every six chocolates in the world come from Ghana? It's crazy, right? Let us take you on a journey to learn more about this mystery country. Um, first, we want to clarify why we choose Ghana and follow by our vision for the ideal, con con ideal Ghana, a strategy, post proposed solution, and finally, evaluation. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Stella. Let me introduce you why do we choose Ghana. So first, Ghana a dynamic West African nation bursting with culture and energy. It got independence from British rule in 1957, becoming the first Saharan African nation to achieve independence. With English being its official language, Accra is its capital. There are almost 20 countries located in the Western Africa, but why may us choose Ghana? Why do we choose Ghana? Now, I'm going to explain the reasons why the nation ready high begins, which is this. So first, culture and heritage. Ghana boasts a vibrant artists, encompassing dance, music, and can take clothes for art and you people. Also, the pottery and wood carving. Speaking of language, there are more than 70 languages in Ghana. Ghana is home to many outstanding cultural heritage, the Cap Coast Castle, which is this, and the Almana Castle. These are the most visited places in Ghana. Next, people. Ghana's population comprises 75 ethnic groups, with Akan being the largest at 47.5%. Then, colonial history and linguistic diversity shape national consciousness. However, a civic mindset challenge arises as an um, ethnic group prioritizes their self interest over national unity. Moving to governance, Ghana gained independence in 1957 and has since prioritized democracy and economic growth. It has become a stable democracy with regular elections and peaceful transition of power. This country's GDP growth has daily grown, fueled by agriculture, mining, and service, making it a promising example of governance and development in Africa. In the nation branding plus against, Ghana's tourism can be a significant asset for shaping its global image. With a stunning natural landscape, diverse cultural heritage, Ghana offers a unique and enriching travel experience. Discovering Ghana's breathtaking waterfalls and more historical sites seems to be more attractive to the residents in Ghana. Furthermore, after the pandemic, the tourism industry in Ghana finally started rebounding. Ghana presents an attractive landscape for both investment and immigration. 
driven by several key factors. First, size of the economy. Ghana is the second largest economy in West Africa. It has spending expected to increase from US 55 billion to USD 81 billion in 2025. Second, the useful population in Ghana. Provide a dynamic workforce and expand consumer base. Third, nat natural resources well. The founder reserve of gold, cocoa, and timber. Last but not the least, investment friendly policies, including tax incentives and streamlined regulations, fostering a conductive environment for investment and immigration. Coming to our last part in nation branding, Huxigan, explore it. In the nation branding, Huxigan's Ghana export sector plays a crucial role in it. Ghana is renowned for exporting various commodities, including gold, oil, and timber, showcasing its rich natural resources and economic diversity. After this brief introduction of Ghana by nation branding, Huxigan, we understand the current situation in Ghana. So, what is our goal? This are nearly, there are nearly 200 countries in the world today, all competing for the resources, trade, and attention. So, how are we going to tell everyone that Ghana exists? Our vision for Ghana is clear. To elevate its international exposure and strengthen its national identity, emphasizing the uniqueness that sets Ghana apart, crucially, but aim to bolster the economy through increased export and tourism by showcasing Ghana's individuality and leveraging its export potential and tourism offerings. We can propose the national power to sustain economy growth and global recognition. This is our ideal concept. In this section, we are coming by employing the SWOT analytic method to criticize Ghana as nations. And subsequently, we will formally introduce our chosen strategy and expand upon our rationale be behind its elections. SWOT analysis comprises four key aspects strength, weakness, opportunities, and strength, respectively. To, be, to begin, let's delve into Ghana's strengths. Based on our research finding, we, we have concluded that Ghana's primary assets lie in the abundant natural resources. First, one of the most well known natural resources, cocoa. The realm of geographic and climate factors, with a fertile soil and suitable natural climate plant during the season match with the growth time of cocoa tree, make Ghana a natural greenhouse for cocoa cultivation. On the other hand, the term of production and supply chain. Ghana is the world's second largest producer in, of cocoa. The country has a strong position in the world market of standard cocoa with a market share of estimates 20%, which show its important on the economy effect. Compared to other African countries on a, on a production aspect, the graphic proved that Africa is the continent produced the largest amount of cocoa with Ghana being the top three in, in Africa in particular. When it comes to quality, Ghana cocoa set a global standard with a high therapeutic content, assuring a high quality cocoa chocolate. Ghana is located Ghana is located in the West Africa in the sandwich between Ireland Coast and Togo. Featured with national parks, historical sites, waterfalls, local lake, forests, and stunning beaches showcasing na Ghana's natural beauty. Turning to the practical considerations, we have to address Ghana's weaknesses. Its deficiencies in infrastructure such as inadequate roads, bridge, and poor hamster further development. On the opportunity aspect, Ghana's cocoa industry thrives with global demand, international collaboration, and youthful for workforce securing their position as a key player in the global cocoa market. Ghana's cocoa industry faces global competitions and environmental risks, requiring adaptions and market dynamics and sustainable practice to ensure resilience. We adapt strength based strategy as our method. We opt for a strength-based strategy to highlight Ghana's advantage, emphasizing on its uniqueness and effectiveness over weaknesses. Now, let's move on to the solution. 
an exception we're going to show you back on us need and our solutions. Our solution is focused on infrastructure improvement, policy refinement, and strategy strategy partnerships to make Ghana a thriving and sustainable tourist destinations. On the real month expert, our primary focus revolves around cocoa. We are we aspire to elevate PPC beyond its role as a cocoa middleman to a brand directly to involved in cocoa productions. We anticipate that this solution will enable Ghana to access international markets, integrating to global value change and most importantly, sustainable market assets and competitiveness. As the largest dealer in Ghana, with a prison in 105 districts and approximately 5,000 society across Ghana growing areas, PVC potential transformation into a company oversees the entire production line from with numerous benefits. PBC Limited, a licensed buying company specializing in cocoa marketing. A cocoa account for 75% of Ghana experts and employee over 2 million directly. Government subsidies for businesses, including tax incentives, grant, loan, export, and subsidies training, and subsidy input aim to stimulate economy growth, support experts, and develop skilled labor in the industry. Based on chocolate market trend, milk chocolate leads in sales. Hence, we will offer different kinds of chocolate. Additionally, Caesar Ghanaian's dry fruit chocolate to cater to tourists and curious customers. PBC well being the West Africa's largest cocoa dealer, prioritized quality, stimulating local economies and generating revenues. With a stringent tender and a sustainability attractive, it showcased Ghana the premium agricultural commodities globally, contribute to a community development and ethical production. Take a look at the market review of our export solution. First, we're going to talk about the size of the market, the growth potential, and the lastly, competitive landscape. The size of the market should consider the below element, one key point, which include grow, growing demand for organic, vegan, sugar-free chocolates. Two, the type of chocolate, which type of chocolate had its own preferred customer market. Three, quality and increased demand for artisan, artisanal chocolates, with some companies opening their own shops and using their pro promote brand. In the global chocolate market valued at US 119 billion in 2023, driven by its con consumer awareness of the health benefit of premium chocolate, this trend enhanced Ghana's potential as a quality cocoa producer. PBC positioned to become complete globally as a direct access to quality cocoa beans and emphasis on emphasis sustainability by targeting niche markets like organic and authentically sourced chocolates. It appeals to health conscious customers, setting itself apart from the competitors. Hi, I'm Tina, and next I will outline how our plan to enhance Ghana tourist industry and our envision tourist brand image for Ghana. After assessing Ghana, we have identified tourism as the first development opportunity. Our aim is to position Ghana as the top tourist destination in West Africa, blinding people tourism to create a natural retreat from urban life. This is how we anticipate Ghana's tourist brand image in the future. And in the realm of tourism, our solution will focus on the project initiated by Ghanaian government in 2017, known as the Cromarine Drive. Our goal is to contribute to the advancement of the Ghana tourism sector through the implementation of this initiative in the future. The Cromarine Drive is a 241 acre redevelopment scheme of a crop waterfront promenade initiated by Ghana government. This epic construction will thus establish a defining skyline for Ghana's capital and re-image the coast as a vibrant and leader in recreation space. 
Through analysis, we have identified that the most significant challenges facing this project currently is a lack of clear and transparent financial planning with the government. The lack of clarity has led to two main reasons for the suspension of this promising project. One is that there is no more money in the, in the official account of this project. What's worse, a huge number of the money that must be spent on this project was misapplied. To solve the facing challenges, we have proposed two target solutions. Firstly, to address the issue of funding deficits, researchers providing comprehensive analysis and implementing advertising campaign to attract inter international investors. And then, in response to the lack of transparency of government financial situation, we hope to establish a legislative framework and issuing public reports, enable citizens to monitor the government financial transactions. Now we might take a look at the market overview of the tourism solution. And our target market will be the international tourists. We break it down to three act three parts to for discussion. First is size of the market and growth potential and customers' needs. First in the size of the market. We can see from the chart that after a pandemic, there's an obvious rise in the number of international travelers. This indicates that the global tourist industry is gradually recovering. Next, I'll discuss the growth potential of tourism industry market by examining three key factors. First is the nation is the nation household net adjusted disposal income according to Ghana's top five arrival countries because income has emerged as a key driver for tourism demand worldwide. Second is the prosperity of global airline industry. Last but not least is the third is the trend of ecotourism. And here's the income increase in USA, in Nigeria and in United Kingdom, in India, and in Germany. So we can see from the picture that I expect for Nigeria, the rest of the country's disposable income were predicted to be grow steadily since 2020, since 2024. Next, let's move to the global airline industry. According to the report, the industry revenue are expected to reach 940, 964 billion US, US dollar in 2024. This shows that global airline industry will remain prosperous. Last is the trend of ecotourism. Before our discussion, do you know what exactly the ecotourism? According to the dictionary, ecotourism can be defined as responsible travel to nature area that conserve the environment, sustain the well-being of the local people, and involves in interpretation and education. Ghana has already known from this, so if this trend becomes more common, this must strike the Ghana tourism industry. Luckily, according to the forecast of the trend, we know that the value of ecotourism will reach historical high and be very pro pro profitable. After the discussion of market growth potential, let us take a look at the customer's needs. These are the factors customers seek when purchasing a product or services. To attract more customers, we adjust our services and marketing plan accordingly. In the future, Ghana's tourism industry will undergo reforms based on these criteria and to attract more international travelers. Come to our last chapter, evaluation. Here we have discussed four aspects, timeline, criteria, data collection, and potential benefits. So I'm going to introduce our planning timeline. We'll start with three month assessment, then invest two to one to two years for infrastructure. Next, we'll focus on our marketing and branding for one to six months. Finally, we will make a real-time adjustment based on feedback to position Ghana as the first club tourist destination. So in this page, in the following page, I'm going to explain how we how we mature the success of our marketing campaign. 
We are marketing for exposure, uniqueness, and economic growth. These are our main goals, which can be somewhat abstract. Next, we will set specific goal. We can observe. Then establish measurable standard tied to those goals. Our first goal is to increase Ghana's international exposure. To achieve this, our objective is to increase the keyword search volume of our Ghana related keyword on Google. This indicates that more people are becoming aware of Ghana and interested in it. Our second goal is to set Ghana unique landscapes into everyone's mind. Therefore, our objective is to, is to elevate Ghana onto the global stage and into an international spotlight. Finally, the third goal is to enhance Ghana economic situation because the goals two, four. Our objective will focus on increasing the total revenue for tourism and exports. Data collection. We gather reliable data to evaluate accurately. This ensures accuracy and minimizes misinformation. After the introduction of our proposal, now we are going to discuss the potential benefit of it. Firstly, our project drives economic growth by creating jobs in cocoa and hospitality sectors, contributing regional development. Secondly, the promote local industry by processing by processing cocoa locally, diversify the economy, and improving livelihoods. Last, through through tourist development initiative like Ghana, like a from a ring drive program, it attract tourism, boosting, spending, creating jobs, and enhance tourist infrastructure. In conclusion, our marketing strategy is aimed to position Ghana chocolate and tourist offering as top quality and authentic in both domestic and international market. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You can stay where you are. Any questions for our judges who would like to tell us? Hi. Hi. Thank you for a very informative um, presentation. We learned a lot about that. <laughs> uh, I'm just wondering, because you put a lot of uh, emphasis on cocoa production and your choice. Yeah. And I'm just wondering how are you going to combine those two? Is that going to be your main attraction or uh, do you have other like, attractions and points to increase and boost uh, tourism? Okay. Um, our solution focuses on main the tourism and experts aspect, and on the expert aspect, we are focusing on the extensions uh, market of the PBC company, and on the tourism aspect, we're focusing on the a marine drive amendment. Yeah, and so these two aspects are the main solution that we're co focusing on the improvement of Ghana. Yes. Um, that's a fantastic talk in terms of giving lots of knowledge about um, Ghana. Um, it was really well researched. My only question is about the timeline. So I think you said that you take maybe one to two years to achieve quite a lot of those goals. How likely do you think it is, given I suppose some of the challenges that you may take, that it might take one to two years? Um, because we have um but look for um for example like South Africa, the official report of their uh, marketing nation marketing, they they just set the timeline like this, like one to two years. So I think we can um take a take it as an example. So I just put one to two years. No, I think that's fantastic. That that example makes it seem plausible that you'll be able to do that. So no, thank you for that. Brilliant. Okay, so well done on another excellent presentation. So um, you had some different ideas for um, yeah, improving improving way you do things. So one of them was about the keyword search on Google. Yeah. I'm just wondering if you know how you do that, improving improving. 
No, I'm, um, how we improving is through this project. So um, this is just a criteria that if we look, if we know, if we notice that the um, search volume is increasing so that we can know that this project is, is successful. Yes. Yeah, and also we think like um, we can cooperate, co cooperate with the government so they can promote the propaganda for Ghana uh, on the per on the tourism aspect. So they can um, mainly specialize Ghana as a natural resource, um, um, really a with a really a bounding country, and promote it to um, every traveler around the world. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. That's everything. So. Then we move to next. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Here we come from the Thailand Girl High School Team 18, and they are going to present Vietnam Smiles. Send smiles. Please welcome Team 18. Our presentation focuses on establishing a company that promotes dental tourists in Vietnam. So, what exactly is dental tourists? Dental tourism means people going to other countries for dental care, seeking higher quality services or more affordable prices. During their treatment, they also participate in tourist activities in the area. Let me begin with an overview of our company. We are a company dedicated to promoting dental tourism in Vietnam. Our mission is to connect local businesses with customers who are seeking to combine dental care and travel. We partner with reputable dental clinics and offer unique travel packages to ensure that our customers enjoy an exceptional travel experiences while receiving a comprehensive dental care. We are presenting this proposal because we recognize the significant potential of this dental tourist market. Many people from countries like uh, the United States find dental care costs too high in their own countries, and dental tourism off offers them the opportunity to access higher quality services in a lower cost area, while also enjoying the pleasure of traveling. Furthermore, you, um, we, as there are more individuals are experiencing dental problems from unhealthy habits like smoking or sh drinking sugary beverages. Along with the growing awareness of oral health, the dental care market is expanding. Therefore, we believe that promoting dental tourism will not only integrate Vietnam into the international dental market, but also attracts foreign tourists, benefiting the local tourist business. And this will improve the international recognitions and contribute to economic prosperity. Let's talk about why we choose Vietnam. First of all, this country is full of cultural heritage and natural attractions that attracts foreign tourists from all over the world. Then there is the fact that the price of dental tourism, sorry, the price of dental services is less than half of that in other Asian countries and less than a quarter of that in developed countries. Not only is it affordable, but Vietnam also offers a high standard dental care. Um, Vietnam's dental professionals are certified to provide world-class dental services. In addition, Vietnam has established a well-developed nationwide network of clinics to ensure that dental visitors receive the same quality services, regardless of their location. Finally, there are both drivers in dental tourist market. 
dental tourism attracts patients from countries such as Australia and the United States, and with more than 100,000 visitors visiting Vietnam every year. Working with us can help address the key challenges in this industry and make it ideal for customers in, from all over the world. The first challenge is the lack of promotion. We will use media and online platforms to promote dental tourism, showcasing the professional dental services and tourist attractions to promote to enhance the international visibility of dental tourism in Vietnam. The second challenge is the lack of close links between medical institutions and tourism businesses. Our company will facilitate cooperation between medical institutions and hotels to provide a comprehensive dental tourism plan. Customers can rely on our company to receive a high quality dental care and enjoy the perfect travel experiences in Vietnam at affordable prices. Monkey overview. So in the realm of dental tourism, customers classify into two categories, advertising standards and cost effective or pro tips. So advertising standards, it refers to individuals from less developed country to get up care in more advanced nations, driven by a pursuit of higher treatment standards that is mostly unavailable in their home regions. And cost effective alternatives, it means that residents from the developed country offer the health care in nations where equivalent treatment is cheaper or or kind more affordable price, which can showcase a like approach to healthcare. So we are not actually in being as cutting edge dental technology coupled with cost effective and high quality dental services. So for example, Vietnam both dental services cost approximately 50 to 60 percent lower than New Zealand and Australia, and a mere sub the cost in Italy. This cost differential positions Vietnam as a husband for the tourism. In conclusion, our proposal will focus on current regions where the top care is expensive or has many technological limitations. The size of the market. Vietnam's dental care services not only attract patients from numerous Eastern countries, but also from many key Western nations such as Australia, New Zealand, and the United States, which has led to over 150 revenue for Vietnam. Some of the tourism experts have predicted that the annual number joined to Vietnam to seek the care is poised to escalate rapidly, reaching an impressive 250,000. This studies has underscored the current success of the Vietnam's dental care services and is irreplaceable statues globally. The consumer see tourists visiting Vietnam to seek dental care are mainly for extensive medical services such as diagnosis, prevention, and the treatment of various dental issues. Also, beyond the rent of dental care, tourists are also expected to explore some of the captivating tourist destinations in Vietnam, which can add some dimension to their dental travel experience. The growth potential. Examining the growth potential of the Vietnam's dental care market reveals a promising landscape from two perspectives. The number one is economic growth. It is said that Vietnam's dental care market is anticipated to surge at an annual growth rate of 10.93% from 2022 to 2013. This expansion is attributed to the country's rapid economic growth uh, and can make the dental services more financially accessible to people. And second is heightened property awareness. Nowadays, individuals are increasingly prioritizing regular visits to dental clinics and dentists, which is anticipated to build the sustained market growth. So, in essence, economic factors, property awareness, and involving healthcare habits have positioned the future of Vietnam's healthcare market on the promising trajectory. The competitive landscape. So our group discussed the competitive landscape from two aspects. The number one is similar companies in Vietnam. 
this is the podcast then about Vietnam we share the information with tourists on the dental services in Vietnam also we consider that some of the influencers who have similar experience can potentially be our company's competitors here are their pros and cons so firstly it's free of charge and experience sharing is actually appealing to most of the people however it only offer consultation and no other services is provided such as booking tickets or accommodations and it only has limited collaboration with some clinics the second one is areas where the top cares are competitive like what we showed that Costa Rica, Thailand, Mexico and Hungary are also renowned for delivering exceptional dental care services, which might carve out the market share with speed. Company overview and strategy. So like what we mentioned at first time, we operate as a dental tourism intermediary firm. Product development. So firstly, our company is that key in cultivate partnership with extensive network of dental clinics, while lasting with local accommodations and restaurants. On top of that, we also design personalized itineraries for that tailor to our customers' preferences. Human resource management. There are some crucial positions in our company that we want to introduce specifically. So travel agents can provide personalized advices and assistance to clients. Our customer services can help our customer dealing with emergencies, our solutions, and booking tickets. Our translator and interpreter can ensure proper communication between our company, the clients, and the dental clinics that speak different languages. Our sales representatives is in charge of our fan pages such as Facebook, Instagram. Also, they need to keep in contact with uh, those professionals in the dental industry and influencers. This can actually relate to our marketing strategy that will be introduced later. And legal and compliance professionals is in charge of our company to check the backgrounds of our corporate kids. Also, they have to on behalf of our company to dealing with any compliance related issues. We also have positions like trade, IT professionals, accounting staff, and human resource professionals. Financial management. So in our company's revenue generation strategy, we have cracked two approaches. Number one, we offer a nominal handling fee for our customer, which is meant to ensure efficient service experience. And second, we foster mutually beneficial partnerships with our corporate clients. I believe that through our collaboration, they can not only enhance their business profile, but also elevate their customer food and business reputation. Therefore, we explore a revenue sharing model specific for our promotional services. Compliance and risk management. So mental services like dental care always come with risk. In order to avoid harnesses to our customer, our company will carefully check the backgrounds of our corporate clients. Below are indicators to evaluate the safety and risk of our corporate clients. So in infection control measure, we ask questions like, does the hospital implement effective infection control and prevention plans? Are clinics and disinfection that start in operating rooms, wards, and other areas in compliance with regulations? In medical facility sector, we ask questions, are equipment regularly maintained and inspected to ensure proper functioning? Lastly, in medication management, personnel training and qualifications, also in data security and privacy, we we'll ask questions like, are standards followed for prescribing, managing, and dispensing medications? Do personnel have the required qualifications and licenses? Is the storage and access to medical records and sensitive information protected? Our logo used Evergreen to bring patient comforts and reassurance, reducing the tension related to dental treatment. The green color symbolizes love and nature in Western culture, fitting our corporate image. The tooth highlight our scene and made the tooth at the earth with a pen. On behalf of our customer all over the world, 
while re replacing one, one of the two screws with the concrete we want to promote. Be that another root feature as well. Hoping that patient can regain confidence smell after dental tourism. Echoing our slogan, we don't smell dental miles. We designed a perceptual map to expand our company's brand positioning. Our company is located in a block of popular rotation and affordable price. In other words, people around the world with dental problems are the ones we serve. According to a survive, According to a 2022 survey by World Health Organization, roughly 3.5 billion people globally, which is about 45% of the population, suffer from dental problems. Therefore, we aim to position our company's brand as popularization, allowing the mass number of individuals to assess quality dental treatment. Moreover, maintaining a certain level at an affordable price is what we are most proud of. It is very wise for customers to choose us as their dental tourism agency. We provide cheaper, we provide dental treatment that is cheaper than in Europe and the Americas. Second, we offer free online consultation before treatment. Third, Customers don't have to worry about fat or hygiene concerns. Our company, our company works with clients that, that are licensed by the government and have undergone our research. Fourth, language barriers are addressed with local interpreter accompanying them. Fifth, given the non insufficient transportation infrastructure, we arrange rapid transportation. Six, we focus on market segmentation as our marketing priority so that customer can simply choose their desired travel plan on our website, saving time on hotel, restaurant, and sizing arrangement. Lastly, we follow up with people regularly for three months for treatment. Arrange additional treatment if needed. For producer. First, we will provide dividend fee to each customer to the various organizations we work with. Second, we will provide stage drink of customer so that producer don't have to worry about how to market to, uh, to attract customer. Third, just like customer, they are strongly to worry about language barriers. The above are the characteristics of our company. Now, let's move on to the goal. Profit is important, but it is very difficult for us as high school students to calculate profits and set a final turnover budget. Therefore, we set our goal on what impact we can have on Milan, a big life corporate responsibility. First, as a dental tourism agency, we aim to donate two squashes, two spas, and mouse wash to kids in remote area yearly, teaching them proper dental care. Second, we also want to overturn the world's impression of Minan background needs and poverty through so the development of medical tourism. In other words, we strive to enable people worthwhile to understand and fully experience the excellent of Minan of, of dental tourism. Third, so, so we, also, we also want to uh, increase the value of the industry to make the Vietnamese government understand the market potential and urge them to invest in infrastructure and cultivate more medical professionals. Lastly, according to a 2023 survey by Vietnam Labor Bureau, the impoverished people in Vietnam accounts for 5.71% of the total population. Therefore, we hope to partner with school, promote the rural children as translator to help them escape poverty.
promoting our dental tourism services is crucial. As our customers come from all over the world, we plan to launch a website and fan pages on social media to increase visibility. In addition, we will also collaborate with YouTubers and bloggers to share their experiences. Moreover, we will enlist dental professionals to write articles to enhance credibility, making customers feel more confident and trusting in our services. In addition, in the end, we choose to advertise on major media and social media platforms. This is our report. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your presentation. I think it's very interesting because uh, this is the first time for me to hear about the dental tourism. And just wondering um, how long do you think it takes uh, for the uh, dental tourism? I mean, if one buys your package for the tour dental tourism, how long do you think? Maintain. Well, actually, it depends. Like because there are so many different kind of treatment in the tourism, maybe a small inspection or maybe a long term like test purchase. So it actually depends on personal need. Yeah. Okay. So every averagely like uh two weeks or three weeks. Mm, if it's just a small treatment, yeah, maybe few days to few weeks is enough. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I, I don't have a good no. seat. It's coming up, sorry. I do apologize. So coming up, yeah, excellent. I, I appreciate you running short on time, so I'm just going to thank you for a fantastic presentation. I'm not going to ask any questions, but it was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Also, I don't actually have a question. I thought it was very, very clear, very, very clear presentation. Um, I like the part about corporate responsibility. That's really important, especially nowadays. And it makes me want to go to Vietnam. So when do I sign up? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for so now we are going to uh, welcome our next, uh, the last team of this morning, the Team 42 from Wesley Girl High School. They're going to present Make Taiwan the first choice poster they can Please welcome the Team 42. Hi everyone, we're Cruz. I'm so, I'm Chloe. Today, we're excited to share our plan about how to make Taiwan the top choice for study abroad. Have you ever thought about what makes a country an awesome place for study abroad? Or more specifically, why do people choose one country over another for their education? When we decided to study abroad, what are we looking for? This is our table of contents. When we decided to study abroad, what are we looking for? It could be academic quality, quality of life, or cultural experiences. Today, we'll focus on Taiwan. What is that makes the Taiwan uh, perfect for students? Let's explore this question together. First, let me introduce our study abroad agency called Kruso. It will promote exceptional education opportunities in Taiwan for international college students, as well as a safe and warm learning environment in our cities. We will also go over how we will work with the Taiwanese governments and companies to make it a success. The key to our plan is bring a large number of students to study and work in Taiwan, and eventually fall in love with our beautiful environment. We firmly believe that this is the optimal approach to promote more tourism, trading, and investment. There are over 6.4 million students who already study abroad. However, today, only 103,000 come to study in Taiwan. 
Our goal is to raise that number to 320,000 by 2030. According to the Taipei Times, this is in line with the Taiwan government's goals. After all, we provide high quality courses, especially in fields like technology. We have some of the safest ranked cities in the world, and our government wants to help attract more students to come here by providing special subsidies for international students. Let's take a closer look. We have some of the best colleges in technology. NTU is often considered the most respected school with best resources. Some of the Taiwan's greatest business and science influencers like Morris Chen, the founder of TSMC, Yang Ji Li, Nobel lecturer in chemistry, and Andrew Yao, Turing Award winner, are all graduate from NTU. NTHU and NCTU are also schools with many successful CEOs, science award winners, and researchers. Our schools offer lots of interesting courses in technology, including computer science, computer hardware, and network. And the next one is international business including global economic, international relation, business study, or introduction business. Uh, the last one is science, including biology, chemistry, physics. When it comes to safety, Taiwan is the best. We interview a few students on the street to share their feelings about the safety and convenience of Taiwan. Let's watch a short video. Taiwan is the best. We interview a few students on the street to share their feelings about the safety and convenience of Taiwan. I'm Charlotte and I'm 16 years old right now. I'm studying in high school. What do you think of the public security in Taiwan? Um, I think uh, Taiwan's government did pretty good on uh, protecting our citizens' safety because um, one of the examples is that um, I can walk my dog very late at night, even in like 11 p.m. I can just walk my dog on the street and no one will go on and attack me or something. <laughs> The Taiwan government is supportive of international students and it offers scholarships for students in need. Finally, we have lots of great technology companies that need international employees. Many of them offer internships. Our ultimate end is to change the brand perception of Taiwan as an education hub. We will become a bridge between colleges in Taiwan and the world. Our organization, Cruzo, will aggregate all the summer camps from all Taiwan colleges already available, as well as encourage other colleges to offer more interesting summer courses. This is our poster. For example, Asia University already provides lots of amazing courses online. We will work with them to provide face-to-face -face classes.
Moreover, we will work with the best technology college in Taiwan, NTU. We will help them bring the top international students to Taiwan by providing most incredible courses. Next, we will collect information about financial support from the government from the students who come to Taiwan and share it with interested students. Finally, we plan to invite some Taiwanese companies to offer internship opportunities to the students. It's good for both companies and students to find out if they are the right fit for each other. This could help the companies find the best international talent. Let's look at the cruise zone team. First, we have marketing. Uh, we need two people. And they were responsible for develop, develop and implement making strategies to attract more international students to study in Taiwan. Second is business development. They will collaborate with Taiwanese governments and companies to develop partnership agreements. Third one is the website team. We also need two people. They're responsible for designing, developing, and maintaining the company website. Number four is interns. Um, assist virus de departments in daily business operation to gain practical experience and professional skills. This team position and responsibility will help achieve the company's goals of attracting more international students to study in Taiwan and establishing the company's brand image and education skills. Next, we're going to talk about our timeline. For months one and two, planning and team building, hire a team and define a detailed plan. Month three to four, platform development and outage. Being developing the cruise zone platform, establish connections with university across Taiwan. For months five and six, pilot program launch. We will beta test the cruise zone platform. Month 79, full scope implementation. Finalize the cruise zone platform. Expand outage effort globally. At last, for months 10 to 12, optimization and expansion. We will evaluate, evaluate and adjust platform and processes and explore new markets and partnerships. Our financial plan. One, government grants approach. Pursue grants from the Taiwanese government for education promotion. The strategy is research, apply, and maintain communication with relevant agencies. The timeline is ongoing, but we are fairly confident in securing at least 1 million startup grants offered by Taipei City. Two, corporate sponsors approach partner with corporations supporting education and international exchange the strategy is identify pitch and negotiate sponsorship packages the timeline the timeline is continuous outreach we have a few business interested in offer internships like ntx a high technology textile company and xr space an air social enter entertainment company three Premium services and advertising with colleges. Approach. Collaborate with colleges for premium services and advertising. Strategy. Customize packages and assist with campaign optimization. Timeline is commence with industrial partnerships. The, over, the overall strategy is diversification, secure, secure funds from multiple sources, sustainability focus on long-term partnerships, 
transparency, maintain financial transparency and efficiency. This plan ensures the financial support necessary for cruisers. Initiatives promoting education opportunities in Taiwan for international students. We would love to show you how a prospective student company show would interact with our platform. The following is the marketing journey of Michelle. Step one, awareness. Michelle, who's a college student, finds out about Cruzone on social media. It offers great study option in Taiwan, so she decided to check it out. Step two, research. She visited the Cruzone site to learn about studying in Taiwan. She reads about top universities and the support for students like scholarships and internships with big technology companies. Step 3. Decision. Michelle is impressed and decided to apply for a study program in Taiwan through Kuzo. She looks forward to learning new things, experiencing Taiwan culture. Step 4. Arrival. Michelle gets to Taiwan and loves it from the start. She quickly makes friends and starts feeling at home thanks to the welcoming locals. Step 5. Agitation. At NTU, Michelle enjoys her classes and learns a lot, especially about designing and technology. Her internship gives her real-world experience and connections. Step 6. Integration. Michelle dives into Taiwanese life, exploring beautiful places and enjoying local treats like bubble teas. She shares her adventures with friends online. Step 7. Success. After finishing her studies, Michelle lands a job as a designer. Her time in Taiwan helped her grow professionally and connect with people worldwide. Step 8. Advocacy. Michelle starts encouraging others to study in Taiwan. Sharing her positive experience, she helps more students discover the opportunities Christian offers. In conclusion, Cruzone will become successful at sharing how good Taiwan is for students to study. Thanks for listening. Questions for our judges? Okay, thank you very much for your presentation. So maybe I missed it, but I um, just have one question about the name, Cruiser. Why did you choose that? Um, it means help, help student cruise your success. And thank you for the presentation. And as a visitor to Taiwan, it was very interesting to see you um, tell us the, the reasons for coming to Taiwan. And I, I, I certainly see you as coming. I can say the fantastic place to come. And you really captured that in your presentation. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm going to talk about your competitor. Uh, you know, uh, now uh, recent uh, countries like Japan and Korea, they also want to attract foreign students and target similar a 37 in the like, 2030s. So what is your plan by like, competing with Korea and Japan? Let's say I am I'm from uh, Vietnam and I need to choose like a destination. And in Japan, in Korea and Taiwan, they can all teach course in English, uh, the bachelor degree. So how can you attract me to choose Taiwan? Uh, because Taiwan is more safety and convenience and Taiwan is good at technology. So you can learn more about this. Okay, thank you.
Okay, thank you very much for the T42. So, thank you. Thank you. So we are going to have five minutes break to let our judges make the final decision. Now we can use a minute to let us It's somewhere that's a bit quieter, maybe, than Taipei, but would offer a fantastic location and environment to study in. So, the Foundation's um, programme obviously is a stepping stone for you to um, graduate at Durham University. In terms of progression from the IEC, we're currently last year 86% of our students progressed to the university. But from students from Taiwan, that was actually 100% of our Taiwanese students progressed. So we're very good at supporting, I'm going to say, people from Taiwan. Clearly, the curriculum is very aligned to do being very successful at um, Durham IEC. We obviously, you'd be more interested in our foundation program. But we work with the university to make sure that we develop the skills needed and required um, at the university for your studies. Our students have fantastic progression in completing their degrees once they're at Durham. Um, so we are able to support and develop the skills that you need to be successful. Overall, as well as that I haven't mentioned is um, Durham University itself is a very sporty university. So you saw pictures there in the video just beforehand. Durham is the biggest participation university for sport. Because of its collegiate system, Durham has 16 colleges. It's where you would reside and live. But more than that as well, you'd be able to play in the football team, play in the hockey team, or ultimate frisbee, depending on your sporting choice. But also as well, it's for everyone to be involved. And if you're interested in music or acting or art as well, there are societies for you to be involved in that. So Durham allows, I want to say, participation in many activities. The phrase often used in Durham is like work hard, play hard. So you'd work hard in your college course, but on the evening then you'd have the opportunity to relax and enjoy what activities that you're interested in. Okay. And the key thing here is obviously becoming part of graduating at Durham, become part of the alumni, and taking advantage of the fantastic career prospects. So again, as I just mentioned there about careers there. So the key system we have is 88% of international graduates were in employment or further study after 15 months of graduating. So you do get fantastic prospects when you come into Durham. Um, this is a previous student at the college, so I call her Benz. Uh, I recently completed her uh, references for doing a PhD study. She's a highly intelligent uh, student like you all are, and she was able to be successful in her studies with us and go on to achieve some great things. I think she's doing a, a master's in Korea and then has gone on to do a PhD study. But if you see here, I appreciate the font is quite small, but we have lots of places for work placements, internships, and again, overseas studies as part of our program. So you'd be able to come to Durham, companies come to Durham to say, I would like a, an intern for let's say a year, a work placement, and then you would then obviously be able to take part in that placement to develop the skills that you need uh, in the future. Okay. So I hope that gives a little bit of an instruction to Durham um, and you know I want to again thank you uh, for standing up today and giving fantastic presentations. It was really interesting to see. So thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I'm just going to say a little bit about the University of Sheffield International College. <laughs> <laughs> that one? 
Okay. So just to explain about myself, so I've been working at the University of Sheffield International College since 2006. So maybe some of you weren't born then, but um, I've been working there a long time. I've lived and worked in different countries, so UK, France, Australia and Japan. Um, and yeah, I'm very pleased to be here in Taiwan. It's my second time in Taiwan. Actually at the University of Sheffield, I studied my master's and my best friend was from Taiwan. So I'm yeah, very happy to be here now. So, um, some of the benefits of studying at the University of Sheffield International College, there are many benefits. Firstly, it helps you to understand your subject more deeply. Secondly, and very importantly, it helps you to develop your language skills. Now, in the room, your language skills today were fantastic, so well done. So you can develop your skills even more by being in the International College. Thirdly, academic skills is really important to develop. So not just um, being able to uh, yeah, live in a foreign country, but actually develop the skills to be successful in university life. Really importantly, making friends. So when you're at the University of Sheffield International College, you can meet friends from all over the world, which is really important, many different countries. And this links to the next point of gaining a global perspective. Now, studying in your own country is great, but going to a different country to study can broaden your mind and meeting people from other places, both students and staff members, is a really great way to open your mind further. And studying yeah, the University of Sheffield International College can be the stepping stone for um, your further academic career. It helps you to be successful in your academic life. Okay, on the screen now, there are some different types of lessons we have at the University of Sheffield International College. So here you can see we've got some lectures, so actually it's very similar to this room now. We've also got a uh, laboratory, the science labs. This one is a field trip, and you can see some students from different countries here. And this teacher, she's called Janet, and she's actually from Hong Kong. So this um, shows that we have an international uh, staff, so teachers come from different places as well. And very importantly as well, we work a lot in teams and, and work with um, yeah, group projects. So all of you today who've worked in groups and, and given team presentations, that's a really great way to practice those skills. So in Sheffield, working together with others is really very important. And in Sheffield, we have a lot of academic support students. Each student has a one-to-one -one tutor, which who they meet with on a regular basis to discuss their studies. And I don't know if you can see. Can you see in the background here? What can you see in the background? Lots of trees. It's very green. So I think Taiwan is very green. When I've travelled around Taiwan, it's green everywhere. Very beautiful. And people say about Sheffield, Sheffield is very green also. So this is uh, one of our tutors with a student having a one-to-one -one tutorial. So the one-to-one -one tutor helps to track progress and check that students are doing well and on target to achieve the grades they need. Now, here are just a few photos which help you to understand other support we provide for students. 
Okay. So here are a few people. This is Amelia, this is Abby, this is Alex. And for students who come to Sheffield, that's the first people you meet at the airports. There's someone there to meet you at the airport, which is great. Do you know what this is? Any idea what this is? This is one of the accommodations. This is where you could live. This was an old church, and this is the common area. So it's a really beautiful place. Also, it's only three minutes walk from the college, which is fantastic. It's very convenient. This is the reception area at the International College. And this one is um, called the Diamond Building. It's a very new engineering building. A lot of facilities. It's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now here, this is an example of an event. This is an international uh, food evening. And you may be able to see, I don't know if you can see there. Can you see what that is there? It's a drink. Do you know what drink it is? A famous one from Taiwan? Bubble tea. Bubble tea, yes. So these are, whoops. Okay, so this is Riola and this is Marvin. They are students from Taiwan and they made bubble tea for everybody. Um, so there are people from many, many different countries um, coming to uh, the International Food Evening and they drank bubble tea. And this bubble tea was the most popular out of all the different foods and drinks. So one of the important things is that we want students to mix with other students from different countries and learn from different people about their cultures and languages. This one here is Careers and Skills Hub. So at the University of Sheffield, it's not just about getting your academic level, your academic subject, but also about developing skills for jobs in the future. It's really important for employability. And really importantly, the University of Sheffield, sorry, the University of Sheffield was voted the best student union in the whole of the UK for the last six years. Now, I don't know if you know what a student union is, but this is an organisation of students who organise clubs and societies and events for everybody. So, for example, there is actually a Taiwan Taiwan society. So, if you want to meet other people from Taiwan, or there are societies from many different countries, there are lots of sports societies or music societies and so on. We also asked students what they liked most about Sheffield and interestingly they said food. That's very interesting. Do you like English food? I can see some people saying no, that's okay. But in Sheffield, we have many restaurants from different countries, and we even have uh, lots of Asian supermarkets where you can get food from your own country. That's fine. But also, you can see there, it's got scenery, the environment, so again, very green. So Sheffield is known for being very green. And the last slide there is, yeah, we call Sheffield a home from home. It's very, very international. There are people from many, many different countries. And you can buy um, food from uh, different countries as well. So here's a, an Asian supermarket. And here you can see there's a panda there next to a Chinese supermarket, I think, and with an old church in the background. Okay, so that's all about Sheffield. So yeah, thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you. 那我相信大家听完两间学校的风格不一样，有点困惑说，说、哦、怎么办？两间学校都好棒哦。所以接下来我们要请 I C 呃国际学生中心台湾区的杨主任来跟大家做总结，再帮大家重点整整理一次关于这两间学校以及去呃在选择英国大学的时候必须要注意的一些重点。杨主任，欢迎。Thank you. Thank you, Angela, and thank you, Stephen and Gwen. Um, allow me to use a few minutes to make a conclusion in Mandarin. Our both parents and teacher behind the camera, 
呃，我用中文跟各位呃简单的五分钟讲一下两间学校，还有我们的一些 previous student。那因为我刚好看一下今天的参赛组别，那事实上你们已经有学长姐正在 s h a r p e l 或者是渡人读书，包括北一女的学生，那包括在新中学的学生，包括台南女中的学生，然后事实上都有学生，你们的学长姐正正在 s h a r p e l 跟渡人大学就读。那基本上 s h a r p e l 跟渡人大学是我们台湾很多高中毕业生，如果决定他要前往英国就读大学的首选，也是目前台湾学生选择人数最多的两间学校。那为什么这两间学校有这么多学生选择？其实最简单有两个呃原因，第一个是环境跟安全度，很多家长事实上都是非常放心，在孩子十八岁要前往国外就读的时候，从一个 teenager 你要 turn to adult 的时候，这个环境是非常好的，你不会觉得说落差跟台湾太大。而且非常的安全，生活舒适度很高，不需要开车，交通又很便利。第二点当然也很重要。就是它的排名是非常非常高的，基本上两间大学都是全世界排名百大的学校，然后事实上都是可能就是跟台大差不多，或者是比台大排名更好，所以有很多的学生就排名部分是非常愿意选择，就是英国的 s h a r p e l 跟杜伦大学。第三点其实是因为它的 CP 值非常高，因为当我们提到要出国读书，那当然会有一些经费的问题，还会有生活费、宿舍这一些问题，宣贝尔大学跟杜伦大学，我觉得另外一个最重要的特点就是，当你选择一个高排名的学校的时候，你选择英国，你不会怕说这个土地宣贝就会爆表。原因是因为，第一个是英国的大学都是公立学校，他们的学费有一定的控管，所以基本上不会像美国四千多的大学，有些学校学费就可能排名越高，就是你要付出非常多的学费。然后第二点是城市，基本上杜伦就是在 b e r b e r h a m 这个城市 s h e r f i e l d 就是在 s h e r f i e l d 基本上这两个 city， 第一个它是大学城，呃，学生呃，整个城市的人口组成分子都是以学生为主。那第二个是这两个城市，它不是在伦敦市区，它不是在曼城市区，它的生活费比起这些城市大大概是三分之一的开销而已。所以基本上你去英国就读，我觉得最大的优势就是你的安全度事实上不会跟台湾落差太大。第二个是你所需要的花费，事实上比起其他大城市来讲，宣贝跟杜伦。的生活品质很好，宿舍非常的好，但是你不需要像呃像伦敦市区或者像曼城市区花那么多的一些呃钱跟花，觉住在一个比较小的地方，所以这一些资讯供给学生参考。假设你们未来有机会，因为今天我们参赛的所有学生入围的学生，基本上你已经拿到学校的 conditional offer 了。我们希望你做决定之前，因为这次前三名的奖学金都是很蛮高额的，我们希望你做决定之前。先了解一下学校，那基本上一个高排名的学校，所有科系的排名都非常非常的好。那当然，如果之后你决定说，哎，我有这样的想法，然后我之后雅思考到，因为你们今天英文的程度的表现，我们不会担心你的英文的状况。如果前往国外就读，会有什么样的一些，就是呃语言上的问题？那只是我们会希望说，你要想清楚第一个科系，如果之后我们会留联系方式。你了解学校更多科系选择，第二个是学校的一些宿舍，还有说你想如果未来确定要前往就读，我们会介绍一些认识学长姐，让你知道说未来环境状况会是怎么样，不用太太去害怕说，哎、欸，我选择这个年纪出去，呃，读书或者是出去呃，离乡背景会不会有什么样的危险性，你们都可以先了解。那非常谢谢你们今天就是来到这里，然后也很恭喜你们入围，谢谢。有没有很紧张？因为接下来我们就要颁奖，把握时间，我废话不多说。在经过这么长的时间的准备，其实每一组都非常优秀。我不晓得长期关注于我们赛事的同学有没有发现，今年我们破例纳纳进了第六组的呃组别来进入我们的决赛，因为大家的表现实在是太优秀。So in the past, we usually have five teams in finals. However, you are being so wonderful and excellent today. So the judges have very difficulties at the beginning of the、uh, stage of these contacts. So that's why they select six. So now we are going to have two fifth place. 接下来我们有两个第五名。那我们第五名要先来请我们 IC 国际学生中心杨主任来为我们做颁奖。
So I would like uh, let our director Angel Young to present the two fifteen. So the first fifteen will be team forty two from Wesley Girl High School. Make Taiwan the first choice for study abroad. 我们第五名第一组是 team 呃第四十二组的卫理女中同学叶柔毅同学跟柯佳琪同学，我们请来到台上。Hello， 恭喜全业同学，吴佳琪，那这是你们指导老师的，可以看到吴琪老师。好，我看一下镜头。好，那 OK， 好，那我们接下来欢迎呃第二个、第五名的同学是我们的 Team Thirty Four。From Zaxing High School, Paradise on the Mediterranean. Okay. So the big story for the second thing is the story. Let's come to the front. Okay. 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 Team from Daxing High School. Uh, in Ghana, glow where golden cocoa stories flow. So, uh, welcome our team thirty-two. That we this award will be given to our Asian Cocoa Director to do the presentation. Welcome, Sherry. Thank you very much. 我们看一下前面哦。OK， 谢谢，谢谢。So now I would like to invite Mr. Diamanda to give our the third place award. 那我们接下来第三名将由 Shafel 的代表，呃，就是我们 Diamanda 主任来颁发。那我们的第三名是来自台南的 Team Eighteen Taiwan Tainan Girl High School. The topic is Vietnam Smile and Dental Minds. 呃、uh, ，maybe we can move a little bit forward to the center of the stage. 我们稍微往我们的舞台中间移动哈。One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Mr. Jorgensen give the the second and the first place of the world. 那接下来接下来两组同学有没有很紧张？有紧张，好紧张。我紧张到我刚刚都忘了叫评审奖评，你看看。所以等一下我们会再请评审补充奖评。So you are as nervous as you are. So I forgot to invite our judges to give the confidence before the awarding. But let's give the second place first. 所以第二名是我们的 team。Forty-eight from Yangming High School. This student is very good. Lu Hao, student, he gave us a very nice presentation. The tourism gym in Asia Pacific. Thank you very much. 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 Congratulations. Now, uh, Grant, please stay with us. And now our final 
the champion team is our team 16 from the first girl senior high school. Bobo Yaj and Vincent were side me fire. We welcome Zhang and also, so Grant, please stay with us and could you give us uh, a little feedback for all the teams today? Um, so I would like to thank all teams today. You were fantastic in conveying some really creative solutions to some problems that I had, hadn't considered in different places. You were very knowledgeable about the topics that you were speaking about. You had some very clear knowledge and some of it was very localised to certain areas and it was really, really good. Sometimes you read a bit too much from your script and that potentially made it not feel like it flowed very well and it didn't feel um, very personal sometimes if you're just reading out loud. When people were able to not read, they were able to maybe express themselves more freely, their ideas. Um, but apart from that, I think the one thing that everyone conveyed really well was clear knowledge and clear strategy how to come off of those um, positions. So, Thank you. It's really, really good. Thank you. Now I'm going to my to give you some feedback. Yeah, so first of all, can I say at your level, at your age, your presentation skills are absolutely amazing. Really amazing. But I think all of you with your level of English will be able to do extremely well um, studying in the UK. So well done, well done to everybody. So as Graham said, I think one of the most important things when presenting is trying to make that eye contact. Eye contact is so important when you're presenting. So if you're reading from your script, you can't make the eye contact. So one thing, big thing to remember is try to make eye contact with your audience when you are presenting, really important. Also, next level presentation skill is interacting with the screen. So maybe there's some information like a graph or a chart. Maybe you can use the pointer to point to the screen to focus the attention of the audience. So that's important as well. Another presentation skill is about um, not having too much information as well. Sometimes if there's a lot of writing, it's very difficult for the audience to follow. So having some images or keywords is very helpful. Also related to that, it's, yeah, maybe if you're feeling a bit nervous, what happens if you feel nervous? If you feel nervous, you maybe go too fast. So take a breath, slow down, especially when it's important information, and pause between slides. That's really important as well. So there's some of the key um, presentation skills, which are the next next level for you. So I think you will all um, do very well studying in the UK. Um, so yeah, we hope to see you um, studying with us in the future. So thank you very much. Thank you.